All right, well, hello, hello, I'm Ruby Burrito, and welcome to today's video. I recently did a video about uh, the first five tips I would give to absolutely brand new players. If you have not seen that yet and you are curious, uh, there will be a link to that on the screen. Otherwise, this is going to be another five tips for players who have made it a little bit further into the game. Now, this might be players who are a day in, uh, a little bit less. It kind of depends on... Uh, where you are sitting and you can I'll list off the five and then you can decide if you think they uh, they apply to you uh, So number one is gonna be map exploration. Number two is going to be filling out your character slots uh, specifically for birthday presents Number three is going to be exploring crafting Number four is going to be trying world v world which is what I'm doing in the background here um, there is a World v. World bonus event going on where you can get bonus XP, bonus magic find, and uh, rewards. And then five is learning about legendary gear. So I'm going to dive into each of them. Um, if you are curious about one over the other, feel free to drop below and click one of the links to get to that section. Um, but let's dive in on map completion. So I had discussed map completion in the last video there's quite a few maps to get done i said you should take a look at the upper right corner there's a, a cool tip um, and then the scouts that kind of give you a, an idea of where to go that's map exploration so it has renowned hearts points of interest it has waypoints and vistas and in core Tyria, when you complete all of the maps that includes the capital cities so there's five racial capital cities and then lion's arch once you complete all of those you get a gift of exploration which is very useful for crafting legendaries which again we'll get to a little bit later when i get to that tip but it also is a great way to get rewards you can get black lion chest keys you can get a bunch of crafting materials and it allows you to have relatively fresh new content on every map that you go to uh, once you go from one region to the next, it's a new aesthetic. There's there's a lot of benefits to starting out with map completion there. Uh, two is going to be filling out your character slots. So every character you have will have a birthday. So if you type in slash age, you will get a... In days, it'll tell you what your birthday is or how old your character is. And every year you get a present. And the older your character is, the better the present you get. So I just got my 11 year present on my oldest character uh, when Secrets of the Obscure was dropping at about that time. And if there's quite a few characters on my account that are varying in ages uh, because it's when I get new character slots. So I try to keep them all filled and if I if I want a new character, I typically just get a new character slot. I don't really delete characters personally because um, you can get makeover kits and everything. So you can kind of change the way they look and then uh, you end up with more characters and you can get gifts, especially when it comes to dyes. For me, dyes are the biggest thing. There are some dyes that are very expensive. But the older your character is, uh, you get another chance at a different die set. Um, I use efficiency, Guild Wars 2 efficiency, to determine uh, what the best, or I guess the most expensive die for me for each birthday would be. Um, <clears throat> after that, I would say explore crafting. There are quite a few different crafting disciplines, and... I know a lot of people enjoy crafting. There's a lot of ways to utilize crafting to get gold. There's a lot of benefits to doing crafting. If you ever intend to get the highest tier of gear, which is legendary weapons and armor, you'll want to have crafting done ahead of time just because it's it's very useful. And I believe for most of them, it's required to have a crafting discipline to a certain level. On top of that, you can get new bag slots. In your inventory, you have all these bags. Uh, if you have a, an empty bag slot, you can craft bigger and bigger bags with the crafting disciplines instead of just buying them. 
There are achievements for that as well, but if you're trying to get out a bunch of characters, crafting is a great way to go. Beyond that, I would say tip four is Worldview World. Uh, that is, again, what I'm doing in the background. Worldview World is a piece of endgame content. And so that's why I want to say be a little careful with this going into this a day in. Um, if you run around by yourself, you're most likely going to die. If you go and try to fight NPCs by yourself, you are probably going to die. And that's okay. As long as it doesn't bother you. Um, the whole reason that I say try World v. World, it's more so geared towards level 80s, but if you can go onto a map and you can see that there's a, an icon here on the map that's moving, that's a commander tag, and if you find commanders, they can help you have a group. So I have a group of 18 people here, and so we have people who are healers, we have people who give buffs, which is what I do, and then you have people who do damage, and I think getting into World v. World a little bit early and just kind of seeing what it's about and maybe running with a commander for a little while can be pretty helpful again you may want to wait until you're level 80 because if you come in people may ask why you're running world v world so early um and i guess it depends on how quickly you get to level 80 but i would say try world v world before pvp pvp can be good because it puts you at effectively level 80 so you can try a bunch of different builds and you can try um you can try things that you may not be able to try in pve because world v world is based off of your pve gear and pvp is a separate set if i go to the equipment here you can see um this is my pvp gear so i it, my armor doesn't matter the amulet you get to pick um the weapon like the attributes and everything you get from your weapon pretty much just come from the amulets um you, or, and you don't really need to rely on your PvE gear for PvP. It's more just the aesthetic. So, while that is nice for new players, I think... I think that it can be a lot more difficult to get into PvP because it's not very forgiving. World v. World, you can kind of run around as a level 80, and if you have a, a competent build, like, you understand what you're doing, and... Uh, maybe you find a small group of players. It's much more forgiving in that as long as you stay away from giant zergs of enemies, you'll pretty much stay alive and you won't have to worry about just getting pummeled. Um, so there's a little bit of an asterisk next to Tri World v. World because it is a more difficult piece of content and it does rely on your PvE gear. So if you're not level 80, you could die very quickly. And by very, I mean very quickly. If if you're a low level, you will not survive long. So keep that in mind. Um, that's more of a level 80. Uh, and then the last thing is going to be learning about legendary gear. So um, another one of the reasons why I say learn about World v. World is because for legendary gear, if you go to the reward tracks, there is the Gift of Battle. The Gift of Battle is required for most legendary pieces of gear and you get it just by playing world v world which uh, for me world v world is very fun and i very much enjoy playing it uh, but i know it's not everybody's cup of tea so if you can get a little bit of that time in early especially when there's events going on like i said once you hit level 80 try it out for a little bit run the gift of battle and then if you have your map exploration done and that's how you got to level 80 then you're pretty far along for getting your first piece of legendary equipment. Um, the special thing about Gen 1 Legendary here is uh, some things are account bound, some things are uh, tradable. So map completion and gifts of um, battle are not tradable. So you have to be a little... I guess you should just be aware of that. Um, you can buy a full-on legendary on the trading post for Gen 1. So you don't have to do any map completion. You don't have to do any World v. World. Um, but you can't just buy all the components and craft it yourself. You have to do some work yourself. Um, on top of that, there's now uh, a new set of PvE armor 
that's coming into the game. Run here. I'm gonna die. There's a new set of PvE armor that's coming into the game, and we don't exactly know every piece that's going to be a part of it, but if you've been playing Secrets of the Obscure, if you jumped, if you use a level 80 boost and jump straight to Secrets of the Obscure, you will be able to start working on that straight away. Uh, so that has its own its own set of requirements and its own set of items that you bring together to craft it. I'm going to have links down below related to each of these items uh, if you have questions. And I know that the World v. World one is a little bit iffy. Um, I was hesitant to include that here. Uh, but I do think that it is valuable to try World v. World early on. I think PvP is one of those things where you can try it and then just never want to play it again. Uh, but World v. World is one where you might be able to find a group. And yeah, for example, the group that I was running with just got wiped. But we'll run back and just try to avoid that group. Or we'll go fight the other uh, the other server that's playing. Because World v. World is three servers. You can see there's three colors. There's three servers fighting against each other. That's going to pretty much wrap up everything that I wanted to discuss today. If you have any questions, comments, any thoughts about other tips you would give um, players who have a little bit of experience, we'll say maybe 24 hours played, uh, I would say 8 to 24 hours played, uh, some something in that range. Uh, if you have any tips, questions, you are always welcome. There is a link to my Discord down below. If you have any questions, please feel free to hop in the Discord and... Uh, just message me or ask i wanted to want to use that as an opportunity to build a a community for uh for new players for veteran players just pretty much anybody that uh would like to be a part of it and yeah if you guys are feeling up to supporting the channel the best way to support is going to be with uh hitting the subscribe button down below otherwise thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one